Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Blood Phantom 81. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the comparisons between Robinhood and M1 Finance. There's a lot of key features that M1 Finance had when they first came out that really distinguished them from the rest of the investment platforms. But little by little, I think they're becoming less unique. That doesn't mean that I personally wouldn't recommend M1 Finance because I definitely still would. Um, but I think this kind of battle behind the scenes is a lot more interesting than people actually realize. And just for some background on M1 Finance, so they launched in 2015 and it only took them five years to have over a billion dollars in AUM, which is assets under management. Um, and believe it or not, M1 Finance didn't start as a commission-free platform. Um, they only took off commissions after a little while. Um, and it took them not too long to actually get pretty good ratings on the App Store and the Google Play Store. And little by little, M1 Finance started to redesign itself as a finance ecosystem where you have the M1 way and the old way. So M1 actually has their own checking account. They have M1 Borrow, which is an access to an equity line of credit based on your M1 Finance portfolio size. Um, you can do withdrawals and deposits. And so they wanted to do like a all-in-one finance tool for investments and savings and spending. Robinhood, on the other hand, is a platform that needs no introduction. In fact, they've been making the news recently and not for good reasons, I would say. Um, so they're starting to get the reputation as a brokerage that may be unreliable or buggy. And obviously there's some more bad news with um, a teenager or someone in their early 20s actually taking their life because of, a, of an, I guess, like I don't know if I should call it an issue, but uh, maybe like an oversight by Robinhood. And don't get me wrong, whenever there is an issue, especially when we're talking about money, that's actually a really big deal. So I'm not giving Robinhood any leeway there. I think in the past they've messed up a lot. I also think, however, that people overestimate how short-term memories are in terms of the internet life cycle. Um, I think like in a year or something, we might forget about most of the things that Robinhood did or didn't do. And the fact of the matter is Robinhood makes the news a lot more often because of the hype that just generally surrounds Robinhood. Um, you have a lot of younger investors doing pretty crazy things on Robinhood. And as a result, Robinhood has been associated with a lot of just memes and jokes in general. But the fact of the matter is not every brokerage is perfect. And in fact, maybe like six or seven weeks ago, the Thinkorswim trading platform actually had their own lockout and you just weren't able to get into their account. In fact, most brokerages have these kinds of issues pretty consistently, I would say, um, maybe with the exception of interactive brokers. A lot of people refer to it as IB. Um, I'd say that one's pretty solid, but again, that one's pretty more pretty complex, so I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, um, where I would recommend M1 Finance and some of these other platforms for beginners as well. And so just going back to Robinhood, basically I think there's still some more upside to go. I think uh, Robinhood is going to offer more features in the future. I think they're still going to grow their user base, maybe not as quickly as they have done in the past. Um, but if you think about it, the co-founders basically did exactly what they set out to do, which is uh, democratize the financial institution. People who have never invested before can now invest, and it's most likely because of Robinhood. Even if it's not through Robinhood, they also forced other brokerages to lower their fees or just be completely commission-free, which is a huge deal. And so now there really isn't that much excuse for people to start investing. And so if we're talking about just uh, impact on society, I still think Robinhood is a huge net positive um, rather than net negative. And I think um, I'm, I'm really happy. I, like, I, love, um, I love stories like this. I love, um, I love innovation and I love you know historically old institutions like finance and healthcare. I love that there's so many different startups that are now changing the way things are and just making things better. Um, I, I work. I used to work at a startup, so I know like what the startup space is, and I just think it's so cool how um, companies are innovating right now. With that being said, however, I think there's a few key features that M1 Finance has or used to have that are slowly being eaten away by Robinhood. So let's just go ahead and take a look at some of those. So fractional shares is something that really separated M1 Finance from most other platforms. Obviously, as I mentioned, M1 Finance was not always commission-free, but once they became commission-free, then you could invest in as many companies as you wanted with as little as like $100, and it was just like a huge distinguishing feature. However, uh, on December 2019, Robinhood launched fractional shares. So that is no longer a key distinguishing feature of M1 Finance. Next on the list is research tools. 
Emily Finance does have research tools. They have uh, expert pies. So it's basically if you don't really know what you want to invest, but you have an idea of what kind of investor you want to be, then Emily Finance provides these expert pies. And they're actually pretty decent. Don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, I would change some of these, but really for the most part, I, I like most of these. They also have a stocks research tool so you can search for stocks by sector, by market cap, by dividend yield, price history, PE ratio, stuff like that. So it's really simple research. Anything beyond the metrics that they've uh, allowed here is probably too complex for the average investor if I'm being honest. So I wouldn't say that anything is necessarily missing from here. Um, it's a really, really awesome starting point. Robinhood on the other hand um, wanted to make their own research feature. Uh, which is called Collections. So they launched this or announced it back in May 24th of 2018. Honestly, it's a huge joke. Like I don't even see the need to have to look at it. Um, so basically their announcement was, we're thrilled to bring one of your favorite web features, Collections, to the Robinhood app. Collections help you discover new stocks organized by sectors, such as oil and gas, entertainment, and social media, as well as curated categories, such as female CEOs. I don't, I, yeah, I don't think that's very useful. Um, it's, if anything, is it like, is it even a positive um, to be buying what most people are buying, especially on the Robinhood platform? Like, I'm not really sure. So I'll still give the edge to M1 Finance. Um, I think they did the research tools pretty much close to perfect. So I'll still go ahead and keep this for them. So next on the list is Drip or Portfolio Reinvestment. So this also made M1 Finance really stand out in the beginning that you can automatically reinvest your dividends not only back into individual stocks, but actually throughout your entire pie. And I think Drip is just such an essential part of growing out a long-term portfolio that um, this, this made me super excited about M1 Finance when it first came out. And that's also why I recommended it to people because um, a lot of dividend stocks or a lot of really good stocks are actually dividend stocks and so um, it sort of forces people to think a certain way and I think that's just perfect for new investors. Back in December 12, 2019, Robinhood also announced uh, fractional shares as well as Drip and so Drip is basically a dividend reinvestment so you can't necessarily reinvest back into your own portfolio but you can reinvest back into individual stocks. Um, the ones that actually pay the dividends you can reinvest back into those particular stocks. And I think this is a huge positive, especially because you don't have to worry about reinvesting the dividends that you do get. And so fractional shares and dividend reinvestments actually go hand in hand. So what I'll actually do is just remove this. This is no longer a key distinguishing feature of M1 Finance. And also around the same time, Robinhood also announced automatic repurchases, which is um, back in this article that I just shared. Um, so automatic repurchases, basically you can set a schedule to actually purchase a stock and you can do so on a recurring basis so every day every week or every month you can purchase a stock which again was another really awesome feature that m1 finance had but is no longer unique to m1 finance in fact i have recurring investments set up with one of my favorite etfs which is called dgrw um, which is a dividend growth type etf um, so i have it um, reinvesting daily basically every single trading day I invest about ten dollars into DGRW um, it comes straight from my buying power and if I don't have buying power then it actually accesses margin which I think is totally fine since I have margin turned on so far I've invested about twenty dollars so I've only done it for two days now um, since then the price has changed this much my first investment day was yesterday so as I mentioned I've done it for two days now and there's actually a lot of customization that you can do with this feature. So you can um, specify the amount that you want. You can say when it starts, um, the frequency. As I mentioned, you can do it daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. And you can specify where the payment comes from. So all in all, I think this is a really powerful feature. And I'm happy that Robinhood has implemented it. And so now this is another feature that is not unique to M1 Finance anymore. And so last is a Roth IRA, which is something that M1 Finance has that Robinhood does not. Um, I think it's possible that Robinhood will also implement this in the future, but I think what they'll have to do is uh, make a way for you to have multiple accounts per person because I don't think that's currently possible with Robinhood. In fact, I've had some issues with that in the past where I can't really sign in into like one account. I forgot exactly what happened, but um, there the idea of having multiple accounts per person I don't think is possible with Robinhood right now. Um, but once that is possible, I think the Roth IRA is the next step. 
Um, I hope, I really, really hope that they make the Roth IRA more limited. So like you can't trade options on it, for example, um, or at least like um, you can't buy options rather than sell options. Um, so yeah, in general, I think um, this may be where Robinhood heads, but for now, it's another feature that M1 Finance has that Robinhood does not. Um, but overall, when you think about it, since M1 Finance has a limited trading window, um, since M1 Finance has kind of a funky UI, and it's literally different than every other major brokerage out there where you have to have this Pi system, you have to do this recurring you know, payment system, a lot of people are turned off by that, unfortunately. Like, I wish more people would give it a chance because I love the platform myself, but it does feel unnatural for a lot of people. Even younger folks that I've recommended M1 Finance to have had some trouble getting used to it and they don't really end up using it for that long. So, uh, you know, and, and everything I've just listed before, M1 Finance has been pretty um, adamant with saying that these are actually features, not things that are limiting, meaning like, they don't want to have active trading windows because they want you to think like a long-term investor where the buying price does not make a difference, you know, 10, 20 years from now. And so that's considered something that they think is better for um, investment health or investment philosophy for most people, I should say. With that being said, I hope M1 Finance does well in the long run. I think they are a brokerage with a lot of upside. Personally, I have their, obviously, M1 Invest platform. Um, I do have M1 Spend, and I also have M1 Plus, which is a feature that allows you to borrow money at a lower interest rate and also gives you access to a really cool checking account where you get 1% savings compounded every single day, as well as 1% cash back and other cash back deals, which really vibes with me, so that's why I got it. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think they're both really solid brokerages and I don't even plan on using like a boomer brokerage like uh, Fidelity or, you know, all these other ones. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I just like the UI of, of some of these other ones. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I hope uh, you guys learned something. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.